So you'll often be in ZBrush and think, well, I'm going to work on something that requires low resolution cylinders or spheres or cubes or something like that. Say, for example, this model here, uh, very blocky shapes intended for a top down shooter. Um, so if you're doing that and you decide you want another cylinder into the scene, it's very tempting to go to the sub tool menu, hit append and then just choose a cylinder 3D. When you do that, and I'll just press shift F so we can see the subdivisions, you can look at that and say, well, that's close, but I've got too many subdivisions on this or too many edges on this, too many sides. Um, so I'm going to go down and modify that. And of course, in the initialized parameters, you'll see you don't have the parameters for a new primitive because this is a polymesh 3D. So you might say, well, I'll just choose cylinder Y then and I'll get a cylinder that way. But that's not quite the kind of cylinder that we're looking for. We want something with a cap on it. So even if we change the resolution of this, to a higher resolution and hit that, you'll see that we don't get the kind of capping that will allow us to create um, gaps like this. So in that instance, you go back to your tools, you will choose Cylinder 3D as a new sub tool. That way it is a primitive and we have the option to change the inner radius and how many divisions we have, um, how many sides we have, etc. And then go back to our tool, go back to sub tool and then append it. Uh, but again, if we don't like the changes that we've made, if we get it in, into our scene now and it's like, oh, I wish I had two more sides to this, you're kind of going back to the other one and starting all over again. So an alternative to this is just, if you do have any object in the scene, you can just press W on that and then go to the little cog icon. And from there you can transform whatever object you have into a cylinder here. So this cylinder here is parametrically based, even though it's a polymesh 3D. So with this, we can change the inner radius. We can change how many divisions we have and how many sides we have. So we can do this very, very usefully inside the scene and make it exactly the way we like it. Obviously, we go back to a Z modeler tool, BZM, and we decide we want to modify that. We can still work away on that cylinder and do whatever it is that we are intending on doing. And of course, this is also valid if you want to convert it into a cube. So just a poly cube, we have the same thing. We can choose how many sides you have on it. Because if you do append a cube in here uh, and you take a standard cube 3D, if we tap on that, you'll see it's got pretty awful geometry. So the first thing I would normally do is I'll just hit this, change it to a poly cube. And then from there, we can, we can decide ourselves um, what kind of resolution this has. So hope this tip helps. And as usual, feel free to comment, like, subscribe, all that usual stuff. All right. Cheers. Bye.